Hi there, this is Nuclear Physics Lesson 8, and this one's a bit of a tricky one. It's radioactive carbon dating. So here's an infographic from HowStuffWorks.com. If you want to pause and read that in, write some notes down. I'm just going to talk through this bit first. So carbon-14 is made in the atmosphere by cosmic rays when they enter the Earth's atmosphere. They've got a, they decay, sorry, with a half-life of 5,730 years. Another thing you need to know, the ratio of carbon-12 to carbon-14 in the air remains fixed. Animals then take in carbon-14 when they eat food. When animals die, the carbon-12 content does not change, but the carbon-14 content actually decays. And the current ratio of carbon-12 to carbon-14 can tell us the age of the sample. So if you want to pause and make some notes, it's probably a good idea. And then when you're ready, just press play and I'll go through some questions. So here's the first one. Now if you want to pause and have a go, feel free. If you want to use this one as an example, you can do. So let's have a look. The age of an ancient boat may be determined by comparing the radioactive decay uh, from living wood with that of wood taken from the ancient boat. A sample of 3.2 times 10 to the 23 atoms of carbon is removed for investigation from a block of living wood. In living wood, 1 in times 10 to the power 12 of the carbon atoms is of the radioactive isotope, which is a decay constant of 3.84 times 10 to the minus 12 per second. So the first one is explain what decay constant is. So decay constant is simply the, the amount of disintegrations on average per second. Part two, calculate the half-life of carbon-14 in years. So let's calculate the half-life. So half-life is log two divided by the decay constant. So that's simply log 2 divided by 3.84 times 10 to the minus 12. Which gives us 1.8051 times 10 to the power of 11. seconds and then we need to turn that into years so to do that we need to divide that number by the number of seconds in a year so we've got 365 days and then the amount of seconds in a day which is 60 times 60 times 24 which is 86,400 I would advise that you actually learn that number the amount of seconds in a day and that will give you the half-life in years, which is 5,723.8 years. Let's do part three. So with this one, rate of decay is activity. Activity is the, you know, the rate of nuclear decay. So activity is lambda n. So we've got lambda from the question. So we've got 3.84 times 10 to the power minus 12 multiplied by n, the number of nuclei. So we've got 3.2 times 10 to the 23 atoms, but then only one in times 10 to 12 is carbon 14. So we need to divide that by one times 10 to the power 12. And that will give you the activity. And the acti uh, activity is 1.2288. Back around. That would be, obviously, if it was an answer, you just put 1.2 BQ. But it's, an, it's going to be an intermediate calculation, so we're going to use the full number. And then we can do number four. So the sample of the amount of atoms of carbon 
is found to have a decay rate of 0.6 becquerel. Calculate the age of the bolt in years. So we can use activity is equal to a naught e minus lambda t. So we need to find time, so we need to rearrange this, so we need to log everything. So it's, let's put it here. So it's log a equals log a naught minus lambda t. So I need to do log a minus log a naught and then divide by the decay constant. So log a would be the log of 0 0.6 minus the log of the original activity, which we got last time is 1.2288. Bracket both of these and then divide by the negative decay constant. So minus 3.84 times 10 to the minus 12. That will give us a time in seconds. So the time is 1.8668 times 10 to the 11 seconds. And turn that into years, we need to divide by the number of seconds in a year. So that'd be, let's just divide it there. So that's 365 times the amount of seconds in a day, 86,400. That would give us a time in years 5,920 years. Hope that one went okay. If you want to redo that, please feel free to rewind. Try it again. Let's move on to another one. First of all, though, limitations in the previous question. So you can be asked this in an exam. You could, you know... Con, you know, do a question like that in an examination and then the, the final part tagged on to the end could ask for limitations. So here are some limitations. The bolt may have been constructed with the wood sometime after the tree was cut down. Probably unlikely, wouldn't have been stored that long. You know, it might be a few years out, but no big deal. The background activity is high compared to the observed count rates, which make establishing the actual count rate of the, of the wood difficult. You know, 0 0.6 becquerel is, is a really small number in terms of activity. Count rate's relatively low, or the sample size or mass is too small. Or well, there is statistical variation in the recorded results. So you could do the results different times a day, get different, you know, different amounts. Just randomly. Possible contamination over time. And finally, uncertainty in the ratio of carbon-14, you know, in the atmosphere thousands of years ago, the amount of carbon-14, uh, the amount of carbon in the atmosphere over time, you know, could be, could be an unknown. So let's do another question. Go to pause and have a go. A piece of charcoal of mass 25 grams. It's found in the ruins of an ancient city. The sample shows carbon-14 activity of 250 decays per minute. The half-life of carbon-14 is 5,730 years. And the ratio of carbon-14 to carbon-12 in the air is 1.3 times 10 to the minus 12. So the question is, how many years has the tree that the charcoal is from been dead? So if you're wondering where to start, I can give you a tip before you pause. We've got the activity now, the 250 per minute. If you can find the original activity, then you can use the exponential decay equation, the A equals A naught E minus lambda T. So my advice is to find the original activity. I'm going to talk you through this question now. So activity is lambda N. So let's find the number of atoms first. So we've got 25 grams of carbon. So we're going to do 25 grams divided by the molar mass of carbon, which is 12 grams. 12 grams. Then we're going to times that by Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23. And that will give us the total number of carbon atoms in 25 grams. Hopefully that makes sense. So that's 1.2. 
five four one seven times ten to the power twenty four atoms. And we know the ratio is you know there's a ratio of one point three times ten to the minus twelve. So if we multiply that number by one point three times ten to the minus twelve, that gives us the number of carbon fourteen atoms. which is 1.6 times 10 to the 12 atoms. So let's find the decay constant, then we can finish this off. So decay constant, let's clear this, so make sure you've got this down. So the decay constant is log two divided by the half-life. Let's do log two divided by, now the half-life, we need to get that in seconds, so it's 5,730 years. Multiply by 365 days in a year. Multiply by the amount of seconds in a day, 86,400. So that gives it a K constant of 3.83587 times 10 to the minus 12 per second. Now we've got the decay constant and we've got the number of nuclei, the 1.6 times 10 to the 12. Now we can figure out the activity. So the activity is lambda n. So it's 3.83587. I'm using long numbers for, obviously to avoid roundup errors. If you can, you should use the full number, but you should be using Minimum five significant figures. Multiplied by, so we've got the 1.6 times 10 to the 12, which I'd rounded earlier. Hopefully you wrote the full number down, times 10 to the power 12. And that gives an activity of 6.2541 Becquerel. Now we've got the original activity, and we've got the activity now which we actually need to turn into decays per second, which we can do, so it's 250 per minute. So if you divide that by 60, that gives us 4.16 recurring BQ. So now we've got both activities, the original and the activity now, we can use the exponential decay equation, the A equals A naught E minus lambda T, to find the time or how old the, the tree is. So if you didn't get to that point and now you want to finish it off, please feel free to do so. So let's do that. So A equals A naught, E minus lambda T. We need to log everything, so it's log A equals log A naught minus lambda T. So we get log of the activity. So the activity right now is the 4.16 recurring minus log of the original activity. So log of 6.2541 equals minus lambda t. So we're going to divide by minus the decay constant. So we found that earlier to be 3.83587 times 10 to the minus 12. To give us the time. Now the time would be in seconds and we need to divide it by the amount of seconds in a year, which is 365 times 86,400. And that'll give us a time in years. I'll just write that down just in case. Times 86,400. Sorry, that's not very neat. But that should give you 3,371 years. Or thereabouts, depending on the rounding. Normally the answers to these questions have a, have a range, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. Let's move on. We've got one more. So same again. If you want to pause and have a go, hopefully by now we're getting used to these. So a five gram piece of timber from an ancient boat is found to have an activity of 520 counts in 10 minutes. The half-life of carbon-14 is 5,730 years. And once again, the ratio of carbon-14 to carbon-12 in the air is 1.3 times 10 to the minus 12. How old is the boat in years? So if you've had a go at that one, 
We've got the, the current activity, which is 520 counts in 10 minutes, so we can figure that out. Then we just need to figure out the original activity. Then we can use the exponential decay equation to find out the amount of time that's passed. So let's figure out the, the activity at the moment. So activity would be at the 520 in 10 minutes. I don't know why I wrote 560, 520 in 10 minutes. So 10 minutes is 600 seconds. So the activity is zero, but the current activity is 0 0.86 with Kevin BQ. Then we need the original activity. So activity is lambda n. So we just need to figure out the decay constant and the number of atoms. So the number of atoms would be, we've got five grams of this timber. So that'd be five grams divided by, it's carbon 12 we're going to use. That's the, the main one. So it'd be 12 grams. Multiply by Avogadro's number. So 6.02 times 10 to the 23. And that gives us the, the number of atoms. That's 2.5083 times 10 to the 23. And then we've got the ratio for the amount that are carbon-14. So we need to divide that. Sorry, not divide. We need to times that by the 1.3 times 10 to the minus 12. That gives us a number of atoms to be 3.2608 times 10 to the power of 11 atoms. Then we need to get the decay constant, which I'm gonna, I'm gonna do now, decay constant from the half-life. So make sure you've got that down, I'm going to clear it. So the decay constant, it's log two divided by the half-life. So we've got 5,700 and 30 years times 365 days times the amount of seconds in a day, 86,400, which we've done a couple of times today. So that gives us the decay constant of 3.83587 times 10 to the minus 12 per second. And then activity is lambda n. So we need to multiply that, that by the number of atoms. So I'm just going to write it like this. 3.2608 times 10 to the 11, which we got just a moment ago, gives an activity of 1.2508 BQ. Just five significant figures to reduce the impact of any rounding errors. Then just like last time, we can use the exponential decay equation. So we've got A equals A naught. E minus lambda t to find time. So log a minus log a naught. That'd be equal to minus lambda t, but then we're going to divide by minus lambda. So that'll give us the time. So let's put some numbers in. So it's log a, so log of 0 0.86 recurring. Minus log 1.2508. Divided by the decay constant, which is minus 3.83587 times 10 to the minus 12. That'll give us a time in seconds, which is 9.566 times 10 to the 10 seconds. And then we just need to divide by the number of seconds in a year, which is again the 365 days multiplied by 86,400 seconds. That gives a time to be approximately equal to. 3,033 years. It's quite a difficult, you know, difficult concept. It can be a bit tricky. Once you've done a bit of practice, it should be okay. Apologies for quite a lengthy video, but hopefully you've, you know, really got something out of that one. And if you need to watch it again, or you want to redo the questions again, please feel free to do so. Thanks for watching. I'll speak to you soon.